We get down probably another half a floor and the building collapses on us. It's what was that like? I mean, did, did you know what was happening at the time? Now, the building was falling and I more or less thought, you know, that I was dead. You know, it was just a matter of seconds now. Did it get very dark all around you? I'll be honest, I closed my eyes. You know, I closed my eyes basically and just you know, hope my family thought well of me and that, uh, that, that it, was, it was all over. What were you doing before everything happened? On that morning of September 11th, I was working my regular job, which is the uh, K-9 officer at the World Trade Center. Uh, I work with Cirrus, uh, my partner, yellow Labrador retriever, about four and a half years old, right, explosive detector dog. That morning, uh, I guess it was around a quarter after eight, we went to our office, which is on the B-1 level of number two World Trade Center, right, and uh, that was where we had our breakfast. He had his, and I had mine. I hear on the radio uh, from the police desk that an explosion had occurred on the upper levels of One World Trade. So I said to Sirius, listen, we, there's, there's going to be problems. You better stay right here, we call it, because he's a bomb dog. He's not a search and rescue dog. And I left him in his kennel, right, and proceeded over to One World Trade Center to assist with the rescue operations. And I felt very guilty about leaving Sirius behind. I mean, he was the one life I was responsible for. You know, he's my partner. You know, he depends on me. He can't go anywhere without me. You know, of all the people who died that day, you, you're one of the few survivors of the actual collapse. Do you ever remember wondering why? That's one of the first things you think about, you know, when, uh, and people come to you and they'll, they'll tell you, well, um, well, God has a special plan for you and so forth. And, and, and I don't like that only because, you know, I don't feel I'm any better than the 3,000 people that died, you know. And maybe God was looking out for somebody else in that staircase, not me. I just happened to be there and, you know, he had to protect me at the same time. I, I don't think I'm that, that special. It just kept on get, uh, growing on me that, oh my God, I'm like one of the only few people to actually live through this. No one would have blamed you for retiring right after that. Why do you think you didn't? I'm not going to let some knucklehead in a cave in Afghanistan dictate when I'm going to retire. I have no intention of retiring on, I will, on his terms, I will retire on my terms. And in my heart, I sure as heck wasn't going to retire until we got him. We lost 37 police officers that day, plus Cirrus. You know, the greatest single loss of law, law enforcement in, in American history. Does that day define your career? Uh, I guess it, we could call it a seminal moment, but I, I'd like to believe that it, uh, uh, more than that, and, uh, and that's not being pretentious. I think that uh, most of my career, I'm dedicated to helping people, whether it be the people out in the street or my fellow officers, or when I became a supervisor, you know, training the young officers to be good police officers, and when being a lieutenant, to train the sergeants to be good sergeants. It's the end of a career, you know, one that I hope, you know, was a good one, you know. History will have to say, uh, dictate that, I guess. You know, or if the cops throw me a party. <laughs> <laughs> I think your colleagues would probably say affirmative to that. Uh, wow. Well, it's not for me to say. <laughs>